Popcorn Kid Crew. How's everybody doing? Hey crew, guess what? Today we have a special dedication. And this story is going to go to Jackson. Hey Jackson. Jackson is the son of a very good friend of mine. We taught together and we were very good friends. When Mr. Burgess told me about you, Jackson, I asked if I could dedicate a story to you and he gave me permission to dedicate this book to you, Jackson. This is a sweet story. It's called Jack and the Beanstalk. Hey, Jackson, guess what? I have another story that I'm going to dedicate to you, but I have to find the book and I couldn't wait. So I said, I'm going to do this one because I did one. And I'll tell you about that later when we get together, okay? Your dad knows what happened. But we're going to move on. Hey, you guys, are you wondering why I have on this police hat? Have you heard about Jack and the Beanstalk? Oh, my good, that little boy. I had to wear my police cap. Jackson, we're going to have to talk about Jack and his behavior before we get started. Did you tell yourself that you were the greatest today? Say, I am the greatest. Say it, say it. I am the greatest. There you are. There you go, Jackson. Now, are you ready to read this story? I think you're gonna like this story, Jackson. Are you ready? I'll make sure you can see all the pictures. Jack and the Beanstalk. Once upon a time, there was a young boy named Jack who lived with his mother in a cottage. They were so poor that bit by bit, they had to sell everything they owned just to buy their food. Then one day, Jack's mother said to him, we will have to sell Bluebell, our old cow. Take her to the market, Jack, and remember to sell her for a good price. So Jack took Bluebell off to the market. He had just reached the edge of town when an old man appeared at the side of the road. Are you going to sell that fine cow, said the man. Yes, said Jack. Well, I'll buy her from you and I'll give you these magic beans, said the man. Holding out a handful of dry beans. They don't look like much, but if you plant them, you and your mother will be rich beyond your wildest dreams. Jack liked the sound of being rich. He didn't even stop to wonder how the stranger knew about his mother. How did he know about his mother? Hmm. It's a deal, Jack said. He gave Bluebell to the man and took the beans. Would you all have taken the beans? Jackson. Here, Jackson, you want some popcorn? You want some popcorn? If you want some popcorn, it's here. You know, we share the popcorn kit. We share. Hey, you guys, would you have traded your cow for some for some beans? What do you think his mother's going to say? Come on. Let's find out what mom says. When Jack showed his mother the beans, she was so angry that her face turned red as a beet. You stupid boy. Go to your room, she cried, and threw the beans out of the window. Jack sat down on his bed feeling miserable. Stupid beans, he muttered. Stupid me. 
Then he fell asleep. When Jack woke up the next morning, it was strangely dark in his room and all he could see through the window were the leaves of a huge plant. A plant so tall that he couldn't see the top of it. It must be a magic beanstalk, cried Jack. What's at the top? So Jack started to climb. Up he went from branch to branch and from leaf to leaf. At the top was a giant house. Jack's tummy was rumbling with hunger. So he knocked on the great big door and a giant woman answered. Please, ma'am, may I have some breakfast? Jack asked politely. You'll become breakfast if my husband finds you, said the giant's wife. But Jack begged and pleaded, and at last she let him in and gave him some bread and milk. The giant's wife had just shown Jack where to hide when the giant came home in a bad mood. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman, roared the giant. Silly man, said his wife. You smell the sausages that I've cooked for breakfast. Jackson, you still there? Do you like this story so far? Have you heard this before, you guys? You like this, Jackson? Okay, we're going to keep on reading. The giant ate a giant-sized breakfast, then settled down to count the huge gold coins in his treasure chest. Wow! There were lots of coins. One huge gold coin in his treasure chest. There was one hundred and one, one hundred and two, he counted, but his head started to nod and before long, he was fast asleep. Quick as a flash, Jack grabbed two of the huge gold coins and ran out through the front door. He raced to the beanstalk and climbed down as fast as his legs would carry him. That's why I'm wearing this police hat. He took something and ran. His mother was so happy to see the gold that she hugged Jack for 10 whole minutes. Clever boy, Jack, she laughed. We'll never be poor again. That's Jack right there. And that's the giant's wife making breakfast for them. Before long, however, Jack and his mother had spent all the money. So the boy decided to climb the beanstalk again, just as before. Jack knocked on the door and asked the giant's wife for some food. He begged and pleaded, and at last she let him in and she gave him some bread and milk and hid him in the cupboard just as the giant arrived home. Oh my goodness. When the giant had eaten a giant sized lunch, his wife brought him their pet hen. Lay, he bellowed. And then the hen laid a solid gold egg, guys. It laid 10 eggs before the giant started to snore. Jack could hardly believe his luck. 
quick as a flash. He picked up the hen and ran. He sure is doing a lot of running, you guys. I would chase him and I would get him. And you know what police do when people take something that does not belong to them? Well, quick as a flash, he picked up the hen and he ran. When his mother saw the hen lay a golden egg, she hugged Jack for a whole 20 minutes. Although Jack and his mother were now rich beyond their wildest dreams, the boy couldn't help himself. He decided to climb the beanstalk one more time. Anybody want to guess what's going to happen? He decided to go up there again? Didn't he have enough already? This time, Jack knew that the giant's wife would not be happy to see him. No. So he sneaked in when she wasn't looking and quickly hid in the cupboard. The giant came home as usual and ate a giant sized dinner. Then his wife brought him his magic harp. Play, he roared, and the harp began to play. It was such sweet music that the giant fell asleep in record time. Jack grabbed the harp and started to run. Oh my goodness! Here he goes again, running, grabbing stuff and running. Shame on you, Jack. But the harp cried out, Master, help. The giant woke up at once and chased after Jack. The boy slithered down the beanstalk faster than he'd ever done before, but the giant was catching up. Mother, fetch me the axe, Jack yelled as he reached the ground. Then he chopped at the beanstalk with all his might. Creak, groan. The giant quickly climbed back up to the top before the beanstalk crashed to the ground. When his mother heard the harp play, she hugged Jack for a whole hour and as you can imagine the two of them lived happily ever after the end you guys I'm just thinking about this story I don't know that my mother would have hugged me for bringing stuff home and she didn't know where they came from. So she went from calling him a stupid boy to hugging him for hours and being thankful for, I'm just confused. I wanna hear some children give me feedback on what you think. I have an idea what some adults are saying. Hey kids, give me some feedback. Tell me what you thought about this story. Jackson, I love you. And let me know what you thought about this story. Mr. Burgess, thank you so much for allowing me to dedicate this story. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna give you a hug. you a kiss and wish you peace and love. See you soon.